what I've done is I've started off, and you can see, as, um, as we mentioned before, the first thing you gotta do is get these talking to each other in polar form. Without polar form, you're stuck up the creek without a paddle. You can't use DeMarvis theorem, it's not gonna help you, okay? So that's why the first thing I've done, after describing the number in polar form, I've said, okay, well that's that in polar form, using DeMarvis theorem. And this over here is uh, 16 root three plus 16 i in polar form, okay? Now you can see where I got this. I like to draw myself a little triangle over here. You can see there's my uh, 16 root three, there's the real part, and this is my 16 i, there's the imaginary part, and this is the triangle you get, right? So hopefully you sort of recognize, you're like, oh, okay, this is the, um, this is the one, two, root three triangle. So there's, there's all your geometry. So pi on six is the argument you're interested in, okay? Now, at this next point, I noticed a lot of you, right? You got to this and then you thought, okay, I, know, I remember where we spent most of our effort last time. You get two solutions out of this and then you take those two solutions, you see how they copy forward and all that kind of thing, and then you proceed, okay? There's a problem with that though. There are two halves to this. There's the cosine part, and then there's the sign part, the real and the imaginary components. Now, what is cos pi on six? What is pi, cos pi on six? Uh, Come on, think, exact a equals this is cos 30. This is root three on two, right, root three on two. So um, root three is about 1.7, root three on two, you might recognize your calculator will tell you, 0 0.86, something rather. Okay. So if this is cosine, right, 0 0.86 is like somewhere up here, right? Do you agree with that? Because the amplitude of cosine is one, so that's why I'm putting this. I think that's pretty fair for root three on two. And you can see there are two solutions, right? The first solution, naturally, is pi on six. So you got this other solution over here. What is this other solution, by the way? Well, this is two pi, right, at the end. And you can see the symmetry of it, right? Cosine is symmetrical. So if you go forward pi on six to get to here, then it should be oh, so close. This is two pi, which is 12 pi on six. So if you go back one, that's going to be 11 pi on 6, yeah? Now, there are two solutions, pi on 6, 11 pi on 6, but then you do the sine bit, right? Now you're doing sine 5 theta equals sine pi on 6. Sine pi on 6 is about a half, right? So where are the solutions on this? There's this one, pi on 6. And then the other solution is... Look at the geometry of it, okay? You went forward here, pi on six. Yeah, that's very good. You went from here, which is pi, backwards the same distance, which lands you at five pi on six, okay? So I know it's a bit hard because you're in radians mode and all that kind of thing. But look, look, I need solutions to both of these, both, right? So what happens to this guy? He's a dud. You disregard him because he's not shared by this. And in the same way, this also gets disregarded because he's not shared by that. So you've got one solution that matters, Right? which is pi on six, pi on six. But, but this graph is just one part of the graph. It goes on forever, right? So have a look, how did I get to this next angle? What did I do? From pi on six to 13 pi on six, it has a period of two pi. So I went forward two pi, I got to here, I went forward another two pi, and then I kept going. How many solutions did I write down? I wrote down six because I knew Five of them would matter, and the sixth one, you can see, when you divide through by five to solve for theta, that's what you're doing after all, right? When you divide the last one that I've written down, you're like, hey, hold on a second. You can subtract two pi from that and get back to this. Do you see it? Do you see what's going on? Right? So your last solution is just an extra copy. It's just a duplicate, so you don't need to worry about it. So that's why I've got one, two, three, four, five solutions from the first five answers. Do you see that? You can also see why this is um, the reason that I don't keep on going backwards into the negatives. What would be the answer before this one? It's going to be negative 11 pi on 30, isn't it? Because it'd be negative 11 pi on 6, you divide by 5. But negative 11 pi is the same as 49 pi. Do, do you see that, right? Because they're going to add up to, to 2 pi. So there are my solutions and you can see, you didn't, I didn't ask you to do this. But this is what the solutions look like. This, I've drawn them, okay? So I've done my best to do that little angle. There's my pi on 30, okay? There's my next one, which is, now how far have I gone? How far have I gone? 72 degrees. 72 degrees, which I happen to know is two pi on five. Now it's not because I'm so awesome at conversion that I know it's two pi on five. What is two pi? What's the definition of two pi? 
It's a whole, it's a whole revolution, right? And look, I know there's going to be one, two, three, four, uh, five parts that I'm spacing them out. Do you see that? Okay. So therefore, it's two pi divided by five, which happens to be seventy-two degrees. Okay. So as a conclusion, because I, I hope you've got your solutions to um, the sixth roots of unity, and then you look at this. Here's my conclusion that maybe you want to write down. I hope you can read that. I've written, written it a bit small. Okay, sorry. The nth roots, like the sixth roots, or the fifth roots, or the twenty-third roots, the nth roots of any complex number in polar form, right? They're equally spaced around the circumference of a circle. You've seen that many times. Like there, there it is, right there. Equally spaced around. The circle has a center at the origin. It has a radius of what's the radius of this one? The radius of this, the particular circle I'm looking at right now, is two. It's two. Because when you multiply this by itself five times, what happens to the modulus? It's going to get raised to the fifth power, which is 32. That's the modulus of the original number you started with. That 16, was it 16 root 3 plus 69? Do you remember that? Right? So doing it five times gets you to that modulus. And so 2 is important because it's the fifth root of 32. That's um, the nth root of r, right? The fifth root of 32. And they are separated by an angle of 2 pi on m. In our first example, that was 2 pi on 6, which of course was pi on 3. Right? But this time, it's 2 pi on 5, which is 72 degrees. Okay. 